a full boat of RTCs. Uh, should you be elected, many of the RTCs that, that you're talking about networking with and working with um, are defunct. Uh, within the last uh, <laughs> last administration, I, I think many of them just stopped, ceased to exist out of sheer embarrassment that what they were actually talking about, and I, this was part of my uh, speech when I um, caucused to be a delegate to the convention, was that there were more good Republicans in that room than I saw in all of the state house and D.C. put together. And the message between the, the Republicans that populate these Republican town committees and the Republicans that are... Uh, our state level legislators is quite dramatically different. But uh, how are you going to deal with this deficit of RTCs to even uh, network through? Mm-hmm. I, I think it's, it's where we put our emphasis, uh, the, the limited resources that we have, our time, our money, and our, uh, you know, the other resources, human resources, where we put, put those resources is very key. Uh, in the past, in the recent past, say the last decade, it appears as though we've been putting uh, all our eggs in the basket of uh, a few candidates, you know, like, uh, you know, the candidate running for governor. We seem to try to put the whole organization behind one one key candidate, like a Mitt Romney, who we who we think is going to be our savior and bring us around. Now, of course, it's important to hold the corner office if you can, very important position. And when you have somebody there, uh, and if they're the right kind of leader, they can really make changes for us, uh, hopefully good changes. Uh, but as, as grassroots activists and uh, town and city committee members and leaders, we have to protect the integrity of the organizational structure first and foremost. In other words, uh, once a candidate has come through our rank, they running for state representative, uh, after that person, he or she, has uh, been elected or has moved on, the organization has to live on beyond that candidacy, you know, it has to have integrity uh, in that the structure is protected, uh, its financial structure is protected, the people were, were protected, their, you know, their, their psyche, how, how they perceive themselves uh, as part of the team and so forth. All this has to be protected uh, and, and has to be left better than the way it was found by that particular candidate. The candidate that comes in um, should be able to, to help energize the base and, and grow the town and city committee in his or her district when they're when they're campaigning and if he or she is not doing that uh, then there's a there's something wrong there you know um, so ideally those town and city committees should should improve and when that candidate has come and gone uh, th- those city and town committees should be stronger and get ready for their new you know to advance the organizations forward uh, right now what we have is candidates coming and going like fair fair weather friends and leaving a kind of a scorched earth behind us, um, and, and that and that's not good. You so know, and you, we, as as grassroots activists, as town and city committee members, we put all our eggs in that basket, all our faith in that one or two candidates. And if if the candidate doesn't make it, doesn't prevail, then we're crushed, you know, and we move on because we're at the end of a campaign. Uh, you know, people are are tired because the campaign. It's very uh, strenuous and rigorous, and it takes a lot of time and energy. So it's important to take a break once in a while, but come back in with a clear mind. So you think by protecting the the structure, redefining the Republican message that these uh, the grassroots activists that traditionally populate these RTCs will simply um, come back to active roles and and begin functioning in a, a grassroots uh, level that is supportive of the new message? Is that kind of the, the hope that after redefining the message that they'll just come back? Right. You, you, you uh, raised a good point there. That they need to come back and, and support the message that we should be espousing right along, for, uh, you know, good, as good Republicans. You know, good government, limited government, small, capable government, uh, non-intrusive into our, into our small businesses and our families. Right. Well, I think things like momentum and energy are things now that can't just be assumed and and taken forward. I think it's almost something that has to be recreated. I don't see uh, momentum and energy at this point that pre-exists that you can build on. I I think it's going to have to be rekindled somehow. There's not a momentum um, that I see that that you're able to take advantage of. Uh, I think there's going to be a a fair amount of um, party building that, that has to take place here. And how do you start that momentum? How do you get that ball rolling? 
Well, you, you take the successes, and there are some around the state, and you share them with other uh, regions and areas, uh, and you you know you show people what's working for us, and that's what the chair, the chairman, is uh, supposed to do as he or she travels this state. Now, one of the classic complaints from people uh, out in the western part of the state, um, and this isn't just specific to GOP by any means, but um, it's more of a general lack of representation, I guess. And uh, it's very clear that there's a difference between the Republicans uh, in Boston and the, the Republicans in the western part of the state. Um, is there anything you'd be able to say to the, to the people in the western part of the state as far as um, that? I mean, you yourself, geographically, being from the western central part of Massachusetts, um, can the Republicans out this end uh, expect to have uh, fair representation if you're elected? Yeah, we can, but we have to assert ourselves and build credibility because the people east of Worcester uh, have a different mentality than we do here. Uh, I think it, I think they feel as though they've been in the game longer. There's more of a history there, and uh, you know they have more credibility perhaps than we do out here because we're kind of out of touch and uh, far away from Boston. You know, uh, but more. aren't there the values and the the things that I hear people talking about in the western part of the state? are very much reflective of these alterations that the party wants to make now back to more of a classic conservatism. Um, this is something that I've heard uh, preached by the Republicans in the western part of the state right along, and, and only now are the things that the uh, GOP is starting to uh, rally around. You're right, but you would be surprised out, out east in different pockets, like uh, the uh, the south coast or Merrimack Valley uh, or the, the north shore in Plymouth County, down on the South Shore, in various pockets, you have folks who are very much like us in the, in the way they see being a, a Republican. You know, kind of, like you said, a classic Republican conservative. Now, Joe Yernick was recently elected as uh, one of the committee chairmen out in uh, his area, which I was very glad to hear. Yeah, right out of Dorchester, and, and uh, Joe's a good, classic Republican-type uh, profile, and he's going you know, to be a tremendous asset to help reground us and bring us back. And he's very, you know, very knowledgeable, very, uh, he's an intellect. He uh, looks at these issues very intellectually and has an excellent understanding of how everything works together. And we need to try to train up other activists in, in that same line. He's already way. reaching outside of his uh, geographical area because he's offered to uh, help with Laura Jackson's efforts out here as state committee woman, which is very encouraging when you see someone who's got that level of energy yeah. and enthusiasm to help the party as a whole rather than just work uh, in their isolated little areas, um, yeah. which is really, really good to see. Now, 